I was uh, trying to fix my printed circuit board. This is actually from a 1982 S10, but because I had uh, done the tack upgrade about five years ago, it's a little bit rigged. I'm basically using a, an 85 printout with an 82 molding, which isn't a perfect fit. Like, you know, you could see right here, the hole doesn't line up, and I don't know, anytime you do that, it's kind of tedious, but... I should make a separate video doing that because the 82 through 85 S10 tax kind of a unicorn. But at any rate, <clears throat> this is a delamination video. So I'm down in the south, and as you can see, my contacts are lifting up. I've already fixed all these, but see how these are all lifting up? And what's even worse is I've even separated from the back part. So it's bad enough when these lift up, but when they separate from the back part, it's real hard to try to line them up. So you can actually see I got a couple wrinkles. Some of them I tried to reposition. And basically what I what I used after I stuck it down, uh, I'm making a mess, was a, uh, just tweezers. But this stuff sticks so good. That it's like real tedious actually a little bit of my corner ripped out on that one <clears throat> so first time's the best I don't know if you could see but from the old glue yeah you can make that out you could trace it out and this is where I'm putting my double face tape it's real tedious basically what I'm using it's from my cell phone my iPhone and my Android repair kit but this is the uh, screen tape when you're replacing screens onto the digitalizers. And at any rate, actually I use that for everything. I've used it for Game Boys. But this is the part number of what I'm using. <clears throat> that roll, I've never replaced it. It's lasted forever. E-S-T-O-L 131-220. And I even got it pulled up here. And the internet. This is from E-Trade Supply. I know iFix it sells a lot of good stuff. You may want to check there. But uh, I bought this way before iFix it was a company. Back in the day, E-Trade Supply used to be where it was at. So if you want to get some of that tape, hopefully that helps you out to find that. But basically, you can see the little pieces I've cut. That's what I've done already. And I doubled up on the... Uh, change tools here I doubled up on this bigger one but it's working pretty good and then you can come back when you're done and take a pencil eraser and lightly erase at the copper to try to take some of the tarnish off I've already done mine a little bit so I guess the the thing that I can stress is it's real tedious when you go to push this down because as soon as you start sticking you can't reposition it so take your time so that you try to get it to line up with that pre-existing tape. <clears throat> the good news is, is once you get them in place, I mean, there is a little bit of wiggle room the way the circuit fits in. But yeah, I'm all delaminated and these were really bad up here. So again, that's for uh, an 82 S10, 8285 hybrid, I guess I should say. The uh, CK series GM trucks, you're in luck. You can buy printed circuit boards, but you can't for most of the other stuff. So you got to find a way to fix it. So that's kind of my fix for that. Uh, I'm trying to see if I overleft anything. I, I cut it. I hold it from the top right corner. Uh, I use my left hand to try to hold that. And I mean, it's tedious, but you just kind of position it. You know, my scissors, because this stuff's real sticky, it'll stick to your scissors if you use the big stuff. The razor blade, once I get it on, let me try to flip that up again. Once I get that on, I use a razor blade very gently to peel the corner off and stick it. And then uh, just a general little flathead to kind of move things around. I guess since I got it on here, I'll go ahead and show you what the uh, gauge cluster looks like here.
and there's where my tack would go but like i said it's out right now so You know, I went ahead and rotated this and came to the other side. <clears throat> so you could just kind of have a better view. This side's a little easier on mine because these haven't delaminated from the heat yet. So that should be able to push pretty much straight down. And man, is it hard getting that lined up perfectly. But it's in there. It's just tedious. Okay, I'm on kind of a weird angle here with the tripod, so I can try to fit my hands in here. <clears throat> but I decided to be nice and try to show you how I do this, if I can. So I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to cut my piece off. Oh, it's so much harder when you're looking through the camera. Okay, about there. See how it's kind of sticking to my scissors? Then I'm going to take the scissors with my left hand. Boy, that's blurry. And I take my tweezers. Let me get back in here. And lift it up with the corner okay then I'll take my flat head so I can bend this back and this is the tedious part there we go now nope, see I angle just a little bit but I didn't push it down too hard yet. There we go. Okay. Then I'll take it. I'll squeeze it with my fingers. Take the razor blade to get it started. Tweezer off the white piece. And then these, like I was telling you earlier, this back here didn't delaminate. So as long as I choke up from the back, this is in order. Or I shouldn't say in order, it's in line, lining up properly. So there you go. That was just my last one. But as you can see, now they're not delaminating. Oh, wait a second. Did I not do my middle one? One more. I guess I'll go ahead and do that on camera. One more time for anybody that missed it. Boy, it really would be nice to have one of those overhead camera setups. It's just a little too far to the side. Okay. Cut with my right hand, stick into the end of the scissors, switch it to my left hand, get my tweezers, pick it up from the corner, and then <clears throat> take my little flat head, bend everything back. Ow, that was so close. It shifted on me. There we go. Just like that.
I think you could see even though we're on an angle. Okay, and I'll come back. Kind of helps sometimes to use the flathead. I got that started. There we go. Boy, it'd be nice if somebody started making printed circuit boards for S10s. <clears throat> so there you go. And if uh, it doesn't work, you just go back and figure out which one's bad. I'm not going to get into that this time around. They should all work. But you can basically trace these wires back and know what they go to. I actually should have used a red cable on this. That's actually uh, my lead for the uh, for the fuel, because the fuel used to be right where the tack was. So I'll change it at the red, but I think I'm going to go ahead and do a video showing you how to do this if you're able to find the unicorn tack gauge for the 82 through 85. S10s and the uh, 83, 83 through 85 uh, Blazers. And I guess what? S15s and Sonomas.